In this video, I'll show you how to build your own quadruped walking Arduino robot using cheap and simple supplies. Just a heads up, it might take you a few tries to get it to work. Let's start with an overview of the robot's body. This is a quadruped robot, meaning it has four legs made from popsicle sticks, and the body is just made from a small cardboard box. On top of that box, we have an Arduino Uno and a breadboard. We also have a separate voltage regulator board that we'll talk about a little more later. And on the underside of the box, we have the battery mounted and the motors for the four legs with some additional popsicle sticks for supports to help prevent the legs from wobbling too much. I have a separate leg here that we can talk about to show how these work. Each leg is made from two servo motors. One acts as a hip joint that allows the leg to rotate back and forth, and the other acts as a knee joint that lets the robot pick the lower part of its leg or the foot up off the ground. Now, if you don't know how to control these server motors with an Arduino, we have a separate tutorial video all about these motors that you can find linked in the description of this video. So we're not going to cover controlling individual motors here. Instead, we're going to talk about how you combine lots of these motors to make a walking robot. Our tutorial video covers using a single servo, so let's take a look at the circuit for connecting multiple servos to the Arduino. You'll want to make good use of your breadboard because things can get a little crowded here since each servo has three wires. The colors may vary depending on the manufacturer, but for the servos we used in this video, brown is ground, red is power, which we'll talk about in a minute, and orange is signal. So connecting the servo cables to your breadboard using male male header pins, the brown wire would then go to your ground bus, the red wire would go to your power bus, and the orange wire would go to one of the Arduino's digital pins. The Arduino servo library can handle up to 12 servos, so in theory you could use an Arduino Uno to build a hexapod robot, adding two more legs, but if you want to add any other sensors or outputs like LEDs to your robot, you are going to run out of I.O. pins on the Arduino Uno pretty quickly, so if you need more legs or more sensors, you might want to consider a different Arduino board. When using this many motors at once, it's important to think about power. Tutorials for a single servo motor will usually tell you that you can just power that motor directly from the Arduino's 5 volt pin. However, this pin can only provide up to one amp of current, and you may exceed that when using this many motors at once. So even though the Arduino provides the correct voltage, it does not provide enough current and you can't use it to directly power this many motors. Instead, what you can do is use an external 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery and an external voltage regulator that has a higher current rating. So this battery serves two purposes. One is to power the Arduino through its VIN pin. The Arduino Uno R3 can accept a voltage between 7 and 12 volts on this pin instead of through its onboard barrel jack. It will then still produce that regulated onboard 5 volts, but again, it cannot provide enough current to power all the motors. So this is powering your Arduino separately, but the current for the motors then comes through the external voltage regulator, which accepts this 7.4 volts as an input and then produces 5 volts as an output. You need this voltage regulator because the servos we use in this project are only rated up to 6 volts, so you don't want to power them directly with this 7.4 volt battery since that could damage the motors. This configuration will allow you to safely power the Arduino and the servos from a single battery. It's important to note that all components in the circuit should have a common ground, as indicated by the black lines in this diagram, but make sure you do not short circuit the different positive voltages together on your breadboard. So you should keep the 7.4 volts from the battery, the 5 volt output from the voltage regulator, and the 5 volt output from the Arduino all separate. You can find a materials list with links for all of the parts we used linked in the video description. So this robot is not that hard to physically build. You just need to make four of these legs attaching the popsicle sticks to the servo horns using construction materials like zip ties, tape, or glue, and then mount the four legs to the underside of the cardboard box, mount all your electronics to the box, and then again reinforce things because you want to make sure the robot can support its own weight and the motors are not wiggling around too much. The challenging part is programming the gate, or the order in which the robot will move its legs and joints to make it walk. 
and there are many different ways you can program the gate. This is a little easier to visualize if I hold the robot upside down like this so we can watch the legs. So here, for example, I have an alternating gate where the robot moves both legs on one side forward and then pulls backward with both legs on that side. So that's what you saw earlier in the video where the robot's gonna move both legs on one side forward and then kind of pull itself forward on that side, alternate and do so on the other side and then repeat. That is different, for example, from the gate I have shown here where the robot moves each leg one at a time. You can see it lifts each leg, moves it forward, then moves it down and pulls it back in an alternating fashion, only pulling one leg back at a time. So we can flip the robot over and see how it does with this gate. So we haven't changed the hardware at all we have just changed the software or the code that's controlling the gate. And if you're doing this for a science or engineering project, you can compare these different gates to see how fast the robot moves. You can also change the angles through which all the joints move in addition to their order. One thing you have to consider here is the location of the robot's center of mass. Since you only have four legs, when you lift one of them off the ground, the remaining three legs form a tripod, and if the robot's center of mass falls inside that tripod, then it will be stable and not fall over. However, if the robot's center of mass falls outside that tripod, then it's going to be unstable and fall over. So you will have to think about that carefully when programming the angles for your servo motors to try and prevent the robot from falling. You might remember seeing earlier that my robot tended to sort of drag its feet along the ground. It wasn't successfully lifting them completely off the ground without falling, but it was still going forward. So that's one of the challenges of this project is figuring out the best gait for your robot and what's going to make it walk the fastest. As for the code for this project, I'm not going to go through it line by line in this video, but you can download example code from the link in the video description. Here, we're just going to do a quick overview. To control the servos, and again, we have a separate tutorial video about this, you need to include the servo library. Then you're going to create a servo object for each motor. It might help to give them names that make sense to you, like leg one, leg two, knee one, knee two, etc. It helps to use variables to define the various angles that you want to move the legs to, so you aren't just hard coding numbers into your program. That way, if you want to change something like the range of motion for the legs, you just have to change a single number and that will then update in the rest of your code since you used a variable. In your setup function, you need to attach each servo object to an Arduino pin. Make sure you keep track of which motor is attached to which pin and then use the write command to set the starting position for each motor. I have a long delay in here, which gives me time to put the robot down and make sure it's standing up. And then you enter the loop function where you can program your gate using write commands to change the angle of each motor. So this is the really open-ended part where you're going to need to experiment and change this with the order you move the different motors and the angles you move them to to see what makes your robot walk best. One note here is that just using the right command with a very large change in angle can result in very jerky motion. You can put delays in between to make the robot pause between the two different motions, but it's just going to move the motor as fast as it can when you assign a new position. So one way to slow that down and have more gradual motion is to use a while loop where you incrementally change the angles just one or two degrees at a time, and that is going to result in smoother motion. But again, you can test this out and see what works best for your robot. Another note, although I did not do it here, you could make good use of functions to make your code neater. For example, here I have several lines of code that move leg two forward by lifting the knee, swinging the hip joint forward, and then putting the knee back down. I could put all of this code into its own function and then just call a single line of code for that function inside my loop and that would keep everything in my loop function a little neater and make it easier to repeatedly call these motions if needed without copying and pasting the code. As you can see here, getting your robot to walk can be a difficult journey with a lot of failures along the way, but that's okay. In addition to trying out different gates, you can also think about the mechanical design of your robot. 
such as changing the length or spacing of the legs, the material and friction of the feet, or adjusting the stiffness or weight of the body so the robot can better support its own weight. If you're having a lot of trouble getting a quadruped to walk, you can consider adding two more legs to make a hexapod, which makes it easier to maintain a stable support tripod. You can find a materials list, circuit diagram, and example code for this project linked in the description of this video. For over 1,500 other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.